Hello comrades, tonight you have shown some interest in getting to know about Russian women I see or let's not specify to one country, let's say Eastern European women maybe a little bit of a Middle Eastern, if one said lady comes from post-Soviet Republic. So, with the help of some of my dear American friends, I have collected a list of little things some of them are not that little however little things which you may find different but not in a necessarily positive way when dealing with a Russian lady on a regular basis maybe not so much regular basis maybe from time to time basis just long enough and often enough to be able to notice them Okay, let's be done with the introduction. Let's cut to the chase. So, let's imagine that you have a Russian lady at home. And um, maybe you have watched my previous tutorials on how to um, get herself to live with you, to become your woman. So yes, if that already happened and she's with you, maybe you're very happy for the first two hours but after that the true nature comes through because she would most likely need I say need not want it's not some kind of a joke she will need to make some tea for herself not for you Americans do not drink tea too too much if you are that one said American give me a thumbs up before you go to bed thank you very much so she will not just make one cup of tea the cup will be at least 8 ounces which is uh, 4700 milliliters mm, maybe less, maybe more no one really cares, right? no one needs metric system in America so doesn't really matter anyways and that uh, tremendous cup shall be served at least six times a day of smoking hot like boiling hot tea you must be wondering what kind of weather would be outside so she would want to drink that much tea well no matter what the weather no matter what the weather hot, cold, very hot 200 Fahrenheit 
Mm. She will still need to drink the tea. Oh, you, you, you are confused at this point. Mm. You will have to just accept it. So, yes, I forgot to put another disclaimer here. Those uh, points I'm making in this video, uh, those are non-negotiables. You do not get to object them. Well, maybe you can try. Mm, good luck. I wish you all the luck trying to oppose her strong opinion. So, getting back to the tea. She will need a special bottled water. Mm -mm. Tap water? No. This is total crap. It has the specific taste, the chlorine, some extra minerals. No one needs that. Absolutely no one. So, to the store you go and you will buy a specific mineral water of her choice to make her six cup of tea daily. You can calculate the costs from here just to be ready. It's better to be prepared than surprised, correct? Of course this is correct. So you might think why can't I use a filter at home? Like a little picture. Mm, you think well, you, you will get out so easy, huh? Mm, this is serious business we're talking about. Water f from a pitcher, it's still tap water. And filter does make it a little bit better, tastes a little bit better. But not to her satisfaction. She can feel the difference. It's like if someone could tell 128 kilobit for per second in an mp3 audio or 256 or distinguish 226 kilobits per second from a lossless AAC format. No one can do that, but she can. Meaning tap water from filtered water and from bottled water. Yes, and I has only started to show you those fundamental differences between you and her. However, if you yourself enjoy drinking tea, well, that's a big, big, tremendous advantage and that can keep you together for a very, very long time. Or at least uh, for six times a day you can do some activity together, which is both enjoyable and uh, Yes, you can enjoy it together six times a day. You know what I'm saying, right? No, you don't. <laughs> Let's move on to the second point in my story. It will be about other mundane stuff. However, you do not spend times in theater or, let's say, hiking all the time, unless you, you live in the woods somewhere, right? Mm. 
even there. Most of the times you spend with your significant other at home, correct? Other than work, you come home to your shelter, to your castle, and you expect your home to be homey, to be cozy, to be comfortable. So, some things are mundane and they make your life worth living or not. So, you come home to your lovely lady and maybe you do not feel like cooking too much and maybe you do not feel like ordering Chinese food or any other take out, you want some home-cooked meals, but not from the scratch, let's say a soup from the can, like some regular canned food, so you just pour it in the pot and warm it up, maybe spice it, correct, maybe add something else, maybe water it down, maybe add some vegetables or cream, or mushrooms, well, it's a common American thing to eat a soup from a can. However, in Russia, all of that considered pretty much a dog food, and only specific, specific, separate, special items are being accepted as canned food and edible so she will not cook you soup from the can even if it's easy and fast and it doesn't matter of the brand no, it's a dog food sorry no soup from a can for you just deal with it I'm not joking. How can I joke about such a serious business? So, the foods which are accepted to originate from a can are as follows. Canned fish Yes, canned fish is totally fine. Tuna, salmon, anchovy, mackerel, what other sardines, any kinds of sardines. Could be in brine, could be smoked in oil, in olive oil, in whatever, but uh, yes, this is totally accepted. Um, speaking of fish, you should get ready to have fish in your life more than you want if you're not, not a fan that might be a problem if you are well consider acquiring a russian mail order bride just pay all the duties and taxes okay also some peas and corn and some other limited quantities of vegetables can come from the can successfully so she will eat it and probably serve it to you however here i will speak from my personal experience as well because I once opened a can of peas, just regular can of peas, one dollar, seventy cents, and um, I prefer to eat them as they are, because they're delicious. However, here in Canada, for instance, you would pour them in the pot and warm it up. Apparently, you have to make them 
reach certain temperature to make them safe, but it's not a mushroom. You cannot get botulism from that. And uh, it's not meat, even if it is, if you canned foods are already pre-made, so they are safe to eat in most of the cases. So yes, uh, this one specific fact that uh, you Americans, Canadians, whoever else, you warm up your peas, stop doing that, drive them, just drive them cold as they are, it's way better, just trust me, trust me, I'm serious. Next point. So, if a soup from the can, a can, any can, is not an option, you would ask her to cook something fast and easy and delicious. And 99% chance that she will cook potatoes. Peeled, boiled potatoes. Just that. Maybe she will slap some butter and dill on it. That's it. Maybe she will boil some rice. You would say, what's the problem? Well, it's not, it's not baked potatoes. It's not mashed potatoes. It's just boiled, boring potatoes in like chunky chunky chunks large pieces maybe if you have a average size potato must be like take it apart into six pieces maybe four pieces so pretty chunky so you will have to open your mouth real real wide to be able to consume it yeah, and it stays hot a long time, so it's not very pleasant to consume in this uh, instance of potato. Yeah, get ready. Fish from the can and potato. This is your to-go dinner choice now, since you like Russian women. Comrade. Oh, let's move on. This somehow turned into a particularly culinary vlog, but whatever, you're not here for this, you're here for some voice and an accent. So, I believe, I believe so, I hope so. Anyways, if she would make you some fried eggs in the morning, well, that's a common practice in Russia, actually. That's pretty similar. Um, if you would to observe her doing that, she will crack some eggs, but not using an edge of the pan or uh, whatever else. She will use a knife to stab those eggs. Mm -hmm. See? This is terrifying. She will stab raw eggs to crack them. Why? Oh, you really, you really hope to make any sense out of it still? Forget about it. Just accept and enjoy and try to relax. So, I was personally taught to do that, to crack an egg with a knife by my grand-grandmother. It's just the way they did it back in the days. So, this technique is being passed through generations. And the ultimate secret is just it makes a nice cut. <laughs> cut on the eggshell. Yes, ridiculous, but whatever. It makes a nice clean edge and it's extremely easy to 
take this eggshell apart into two parts and spill it wherever you want to spill it and uh, no fallout no annoying little pieces of eggshell flying into your scrambled eggs so you will not have to chew them after now it makes sense correct but at the beginning not so much okay what do I have here? what else? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, of course of course you will expand your culinary horizon as well and uh, you will get to know what the hell in the world is buckwheat do you know what is buckwheat? okay if you are gluten free gmo free vegan friendly wheat free 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 type of person well i do not have anything against uh, modern organic market but uh, let's remember it's just for the most part the marketing technique right so if you are aware of the market in that area you know what the, what the hell a buckwheat is but if you're just a regular guy you have no clue so that specific grain is very smelly however it has so much protein per 100 grams which is three ounces okay let's just let's just relax about it now it's pretty much a bodybuilder uh, food to consume like lentils you know what a lentil is i hope so okay but buckwheat it's just such a national tradition when the covid began you americans went to buy toilet paper <laughs> funny funny people and Russians went to buy all the buckwheat because it stores forever shelf life indefinite lots of protein lots of carbs very low glycemic index perfect healthy food long term amazing for your bunker so yeah you probably will eat it a lot but get ready for the smell so buckwheat fish and tea and potato maybe maybe some barley too not not so much barley mm. oh those culinary choices i have some other household maintenance issues for you well maybe it was not an issue previously but since you have that Russian lady with you I will have to share this this is very personal as well so it is not common in Russia to have a dishwasher if you want to have a dishwasher you get married in Russia, okay? Badum. Yes, it's an uh, actual, actual legitimate joke and uh, Russians do not find it too offensive, it's a joke Yes, so um, your woman she will probably see a dishwasher for, us for the first time when she moves in with you thus um, the concept of using a piece of machinery to do something which has been done by hand for centuries it is bizarre and uh, it doesn't make sense you will just wash it by hand because it's faster but uh, water bills in america are different from russian and uh, it totally makes sense to use a dishwasher 
However, if she would to use it, she will probably just put a plate with all the leftovers and stuck to it and hoping that dishwasher will just somehow dissolve it, which is not the case. So pre-washing and loading the dishwasher, it will take some practice for her to finally do, if, if that would ever happen. Yep. Some think that Russia is some kind of a wild country. No, I don't think so. It's that America is very advanced and uh, some basic necessities are common, like household machines which make your life easier. We'll get to another one very soon. Or having an automobile in the family, or two of them, or three of them. How many else you need to live your life happy and not depend on a bus routes or stuff like that. And let's get to another piece of equipment, a dryer. So having a dryer next to a washing machine, it's not a thing. Yes, uh, Russians, they, for the most part, air dry their clothing and bed linen. And if it's cold outside, it still gets dry, but it gets <laughs> frozen. <laughs> that, that, that is funny. So you go to your balcony and yes, you are totally allowed to hang your clothes outside on your balcony. No one, there's no condo by law, by the way. No one cares what you do in your premises, what you hang there. Well, unless it's not uh, some kind of a flag, some other country flag. Uh, other than that, no one cares. Condo by law does not exist. By laws, they pretty much do not exist. <laughs> Yes, uh, so she will probably try to go to your backyard and uh, install some kind of a post and fix a rope to dry the clothing because, again, this is how things are done back in the homeland, in the motherland. Mm. It just is, again, just accept it. So using a dryer is something new and having a big pile of clothes nice and clean and dry in a matter of, let's say, two hours. It's, it's amazing experience for a Russian lady to see and to actually execute on a on her daily basis, or maybe once a week or two, correct? And um, thing like dryer sheets and dryer poles. This is absolute novice, and um, you will have some troubles explaining why you need that. Um, yeah, Russians don't really care about uh, static electricity or lint, not a problem at all. It's just um, somehow it is a problem in America, but not a problem in Russia. See, cultural differences. So just remind her to put a couple of dryer tissues, sheets with the clothing to make it nice and soft to enjoy a pile of fresh laundry after that. So getting to my last point for today. She will probably sleep naked 
Yes, we'll uh, get into the sleep topic. Just the sleep topic. This fact does not have uh, any explanations. So, if she sleeps next to you, she will probably be naked. I don't think this is any kind of a problem. So, that you should enjoy. I believe, or not, up to you. So, those things are to consider if you find yourself next to a Russian lady and you wish to, and you wish to live with her in your house not in her, her house because Russians do not live in houses majority of them don't they live in small apartments with no bylaws so you can put any color of curtains and uh, anyone can actually come into, into the property but the doors are made of steel This was the list, but it was not all. There are many little details to share, and I will share them later. At this time, at this time, it's time to sleep naked. Very, very, very naked. Good night.